Acts 1, 1 through 8. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met again, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Oh, picture, picture a house. The mom, she gets off the phone and calls to her nine-year-old son, Ricky, your dad just called. He needs his five-eighths inch wrench. He's at work, you know, five blocks down on South Street. Sure, mom. And Ricky heads off with that five-eighths inch wrench for his dad. And he gets as far as Billy's house, right next door. Billy says, where are you going? And Ricky says, well, I gotta take this wrench to my dad. And Billy says, can I come along? So they wait for Billy to ask his mom, who's in the middle of something, and says, wait a minute, don't interrupt. Finally, they get the okay. So the two of them start out, and they get as far as the construction site at the street's end, where they spend about half an hour watching the bulldozer, the ditch witch, the workers that are putting sod out, the bricklayers, the plumbers, the drywallers, and it goes on and on. Now, they have to walk past the candy store. Mr. Johnson sees them and motions them to come in. Three pieces of candy each on the house. Now, should I take the red licorice, the bubble gum, maybe a baby, baby Ruth, caramel? Chocolate, one of those cow tails, some gum drops. Two hours later, here's your tool, Dad. Mom sent me down with it. I'm sure you can picture that happening. Very typical of, of youngsters to be like that. To get distracted, to not concentrate. Well, Sometimes that's us. More than often, more often than not, that's us. The text I read records our Lord's last meeting with his disciples while he was here on earth. He's preparing to ascend back to heaven to sit down at the right hand of God. Before he leaves, he commands and commissions his men to reach the world with his message. He reminds them of what should be the central idea, the main event. But there's, of course, a distraction. In verses 6 and 7, they want to talk about future things and the power for Israel. <laughs> Jesus is trying to conduct the world's first mission conference, and they want to turn it into prophecy and power. They want to know if the time has come for Jesus to establish the kingdom here on earth. He tells them the times and seasons are not their concern. Their responsibility is to be faithful to him and work while they wait. He didn't rebuke them for asking a valid question. He simply told them the time was God's secret. And then he redirected their attention to the great task of world evangelism. And you know, through all of the time periods, nothing has changed. 
Our duty is not to get caught up in future events or other theological disputes that distract us from the main event. Several months ago, it was predicted that the world would end. And some people got all caught up in that because someone said they knew when it would happen. So people went out and sold what they had. I don't know what the purpose of that quite was because if the rapture comes and we're taken away, whether you have a house and a car or you've sold your house and a car and have money or you did that and gave the money to somebody but you'd want to give it to somebody that was going to go with you, wouldn't you? Because those are the important people to you. Oh, well, anyway. Jesus commands his disciples in all time periods to be his witnesses. Verse 8 is very clear. Every believer is commissioned, commanded, and empowered to share the gospel with a lost world. We are his ambassadors in the world. The very last word that Jesus spoke, go to the uttermost part of the world. We're not called to be lawyers. We're not called to argue the case before the minds of men. Jesus told them, you are to be witnesses unto me. Jesus is the sole focus of the message. And we are to tell people about him. Our only mission is to point the world to Jesus. Someone once said, it's like one beggar telling another beggar where to find free bread. We are beggars, they are beggars, and the bread is the bread of life. Now, it's a big task, so Jesus breaks it down. He starts small and moves out. It's like John Wesley. The world is his parish, but he started small, preaching to the people around him and spread from there. We can preach on the radio, we can preach on the internet, but it's the personal contact that's important. Picture Williamsport at the top of a rectangle. 40 miles south of us, around Sealands Grove. 40 miles west of us is Lock Haven. I'm not sure what town is 40 miles east of us, but you get the picture. 40 miles south, west, and east. And we're at the top of that, top middle of that rectangle. That would be Judea, the state that Jerusalem was in. Jesus told the, his disciples, evangelize Jerusalem, which would be your community, and then expand that to Judea, which would be your state. And then north of us, towards Mansfield and Wellsboro, would be Samaria, which was the neighboring state. Now, Judea didn't get along with Samaria. Not at all. In fact, if the people from Judea wanted to go above Samaria, they skirted around it rather than cut through it. But Jesus said, evangelize Samaria. Whether you like them or not. Bring them into the fold. Judea belonged to Dan and Benjamin, Judah and Simon. It was the largest of the Palestinian provinces. Samaria was above it. So we are to evangelize our Jerusalem, Williamsport. And then our district, perhaps, within the United Methodist Church or our county, or our state. And then we are to go to Samaria, north of us perhaps. 
perhaps into New York State. And then he said, go to the utmost part of the earth. That would be the rest of the world. That's what we are to do. We are not to get caught up in church politics. We are not to worry about the color of the carpet. We are not to worry at a community dinner whether the hot dogs are put on the plate this way or they're put on the plate this way. The important thing is serve them and get the word out about Jesus. Oh, some things are important within the church. Certainly, if we are choosing new carpet, there would be some people that we would ask about, some experts, what type carpet would be best, what color might look nice in here, what would be easy to keep clean, what would hold up the best. But those are minor issues. The main event is get the word out about Jesus. The sad thing about what's happened to the churches, we've become social clubs. People gather to hear about what's going on. Who's who? What's up? Who's wearing what? Who's buying what? Who's going where? We get too focused on the time of fellowship between First Church and Sunday School and not focused on the message that was preached in First Church or that will be brought out by the teachers in Sunday School or by the pastor in Second Service. Hard realization, but that's what happens. People get caught up in the minor things. It's very important to socialize with fellow Christians and non-Christians that may be visiting. But the main event is the message of Jesus Christ to the world. We need to get energized in church. We need to learn more in church. And then we need to get that word out through community dinners, through vacation Bible school. What's interesting is God didn't commission the rest of the world to come to us. He commissioned us to go to the rest of the world. Now, we had a unique opportunity this past week because... VBS was set up and the world came in here and we had a chance to talk to 50 kids about Jesus Christ. The bottom line is don't let this beautiful church be a social club where we swap recipes and catch up on the latest news. Make it a house of worship. Make it a place where the fruits of our labor will be evident by bringing new faces in and showing them Jesus in how we worship, in how we act, and in how we treat them here and away from here. We need to baptize them in Jesus so they can help us make more disciples. We need to get busy and share Jesus. Amen.